Hi everyone, my name is Kiera and I'm a student at Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas, where I study freshwater mussels. And today I'm going to be answering a few of your questions about mussels. So first, Nolan asked, can you tell me more about mussels? And yes, Nolan, I absolutely can. Freshwater mussels, or clams, are funny little animals that you can find in rivers, lakes, and streams. There are almost a thousand different types of mussels in the world, and North America, where we live, is home to almost 300 of those different kinds. Mussels come in all shapes and sizes and are really good for the water that they call their homes, because they can take the bad stuff like pollution out of the water by filtering and they can also change the places they live to make them nicer for other organisms like fish or crayfish, as well as many other great things. One of the really cool things about mussels is that they have a life cycle kind of like a butterfly, where they go through different stages. Baby mussels can start out inside their mothers as really, really tiny clams, so small that sometimes you can't even see them without a magnifying glass. When they're ready, they leave their mother and go to live on fish gills, where they get a free ride to wherever the fish goes. Then, eventually, when they're old enough, they drop off onto the river or lake bottom and start growing all on their own, from really tiny mussels to adult mussels, and then the cycle begins again. You might wonder how freshwater mussels can hitch a free ride with fish, since they can't just call a taxi or a bus or have their parents come pick them up like we do. Well, they have a pretty cool way of doing this. A lot of freshwater mussels have what we call lures, which often look like tiny little fish or crayfish. And these lures attract bigger fish looking for a tasty snack. The mama mussels, like the one seen here, wave this fake fish around in the water, and when the big fish come to take a bite, the mama mussel shoots the baby mussels like a cannonball right into the fish's face. So instead of a snack, the fish gets a face full of mussels. Some other mussels, like the snuffbox mussel here, will snatch a fish right by the head, trapping them and pumping baby mussels into them. Usually, this doesn't hurt the fish, and most of the time, the fish doesn't even really notice that they now have a bunch of little hitchhikers getting a free ride. Next, Emma and Bradley and Lane and Skylar want to know why mussels look the way they do, and how we know when we see a mussel. Well, that's a great question, and there are mussels of all shapes and sizes. Some mussels are bumpy or wavy, and some are smooth. There are also really big mussels that can be the size of a dinner plate, and really small mussels barely bigger than the nail on your pinky finger. A lot of times, mussels can just look and feel like rocks, and it takes some practice to be able to tell when you actually find a mussel. They also can have some funny names, like the snuffbox, the pimpleback, maple leaf, pistol grip, and lots of other silly names. The mussels here on this slide are found in either Michigan or Texas, which is where I have studied mussels, but there are lots of other types too. Ari and Carl would like to know what do mussels eat, and that's a great question. Mussels are what we call filter feeders, meaning they suck up particles and little tiny creatures in the water through what they call a siphon kind of like we would suck juice or milk through a straw. Mussels usually eat tiny little organisms like algae, plankton, and bacteria that live in the water, but they also suck up some of the nasty things in the water like pollution, so they make the water that they live in extra clean. In fact, one single mussel can filter as many as 15 gallons of water a day. That's almost 300 cups of water. The next question is why do mussels live in water? Well, mussels need water to survive because without it, they would dry out. They also get their food from the water and they need to be in the water because that is where all the fish are. Without water, mussels can't live for very long. Next, Holden wants to know what temperature mussels like. 
That's a great question, Holden. Usually, muscles like water that isn't too hot or too cold, kind of like Goldilocks likes her porridge. Some muscles can tolerate warmer water or colder water, whereas other muscles can only survive in water that is not too extreme in either direction. This is why, like Andy asked, some muscles are found in different places. The muscles in places like Texas are probably better used to handling hot temperatures than muscles in places like North Carolina or Michigan. Next, Iowa wants to know what happens to muscles if water gets too hot, which is a super great question. Different types of muscles can survive at different temperatures, but if it gets too hot, muscles won't be able to survive. Part of this is because, just like we need oxygen to breathe, Muscles need oxygen that they get from the water, and when it gets really hot, they just can't get enough. Some muscles are really good at dealing with hot temperatures, while others are really bad at it. But all muscles have certain temperatures above which they aren't able to live anymore. The next question is, are muscles dangerous? Which is another great question. We scientists who study muscles like to sometimes think of them as living rocks, because they don't move around too much and they often look and feel just like rocks. Muscles aren't any more dangerous than a normal rock would be, but they are what we call endangered, meaning that many species don't exist in very high numbers anymore and are being threatened by things like pollution, drought, or changes in the water. Because of this, we try to learn more about muscles so that we can protect them. Isla wants to know if you can find a muscle and put it in a tank as a pet. Unfortunately, in most places, you cannot keep freshwater mussels as a pet because, like we said, many of them are endangered, which usually means there aren't very many of them left in the wild, and so we want to make sure that they stay safe and happy in the rivers and lakes where they belong. Sometimes, scientists do bring mussels into their laboratories to study them and learn more about them, but not just to keep them as pets, and we usually try to put them back once we're done with them. Next, Brant and Emmett want to know if mussels can make pearls, and yes, a mussel can have a pearl. Most of the pearls we see in jewelry come from oysters, which live in the ocean, but freshwater mussels can make pearls too. What happens is a mussel will get a piece of sand or some other little particle inside of their shell, and it irritates them sort of like a little tickle. So to stop the tickle, the mussel will cover up the little piece that is bothering them by making a sort of spit and surrounding the piece with the same material that their shell is made from, leaving a pearl. Many pearls made into jewelry also contain little tiny pieces of freshwater mussel shell, which pearl makers use to make pearls form faster by making their center out of mussel shell. Most mussels don't have pearls, but some do, and can even have multiple. Freshwater pearls usually look a little different from the pearls we wear as jewelry because when they form naturally, they often aren't perfectly circular, but they're still very pretty and unique, and a lot of times, people will pay a lot of money for them. In fact, the biggest freshwater pearl ever found was sold for $374,000. That's a lot of money. Next, Ellie wants to know how we find the mussels. Well, there are a couple of different ways we find them. If the water is very clear, we can search with our eyes and look for the mussels. Sometimes, though, if the water isn't very clear, we have to just feel around with our hands. In Texas, we usually find mussels tucked away underneath big rocks or in cracks or crevices, or in plants found inside the water. If the water is really deep, sometimes we have to put on scuba gear and go diving for mussels, which is super fun, too. Sam wants to know, what do I do every day? Well, I spend a lot of days out looking for mussels. When I go out to search for mussels, I usually pick a place to search, which I call a site. Sometimes the sites can be really far away, and I might drive pretty far to get to them. Some sites I also have to kayak to because they are far from places like bridges or people's homes where I can get access. Then, I usually like to take some measurements so that I can learn more about my sites. So I measure things like how cold or hot the water is, how deep the water is, 
and how wide the river might be. After that, I start searching for mussels. Usually, when we find mussels, we also like to measure them to see how long or big they are, just like you measure how tall you are. Just like you, mussels get bigger as they get older, so we can sometimes tell a little bit about how old they are based on their length. Sometimes I also get to help with other projects, like looking for insects and bugs in the water too, which is really fun. Next, Ben wants to know what it's like to dive in rivers and do research. Well, Ben, it's a lot of fun, but it's hard work too. Sometimes we find a lot of mussels, and sometimes we search and search and still can't find anything at all. Sometimes it's really hot, or sometimes it can be very cold, and other times the water is just perfect. Sometimes we even go to places where it's hard to sample because of things like plants in the water, and we come up looking like swamp monsters. Millie, Eva, and George want to know, why do I study mussels? Well, for one thing, I think they're really cool, and I love how many different kinds there are. Mainly, though, I think it's important to study mussels so that we can find out more about them. That way, we can come up with ways to help protect them so that in the future, they're still around to clean our water and to look and be awesome. Emmy and Halen want to know why I became a scientist. Well, I've always loved being outside and learning new things, and that is one of the amazing things about science. You can study almost anything you want to, and there's always something new to learn about and more questions to ask. Maddie and Kellen asked, what inspired me to study biology? Well, I grew up in Michigan with a river flowing through my backyard, and I always loved to learn about nature and discover all the amazing things that the river had to offer. Plus, I really loved swimming in animals, so biology was a natural fit. Eli wants to know what it's like to be a scientist, and what is my favorite thing about science? Being a scientist can sometimes be difficult because you have to be very organized and there's a lot to learn so that you can study new things and learn about them, but it's totally worth it. There are so many amazing things to learn about in science, which is what I love about it. You can always find out something that you didn't know before. The next question is, have I always loved nature? And the answer is yes. I love being outside and seeing cool plants and animals, which is what inspires me to learn more about them. Next, Owen wants to know if I'm interested in global warming. Yes, Owen, I am. I think it is really important to understand how global warming can impact animals like freshwater mussels, because that way we can aim to protect them in the future. I also think it's important for us to figure out how we can help slow global warming and help make the world a better place to live. Now that you know a little more about mussels and what it's like to be a scientist, you should also know that there are many amazing mussel species where you live too. North Carolina has as many as 57 different types of freshwater mussels, some of which you can see at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in Raleigh. There's a doctor there named Art Bogan who knows a ton about mussels, and there's a huge collection of mussels there to look at and learn about. Finally, there's one more question that I have left, and that is Layla's question. Do I have a horse? Unfortunately, Layla, I do not have a horse, but I do have three dogs back home in Michigan named Cash, Kila, and Rigby, and my roommate here in Texas has an adorable kitten named Bucky. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions, and if you want to learn more about anything at all, here are some great websites that can help you learn all that you could ever want about freshwater mussels.